In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate correlation coefficient using Excel. Now, why would you want to use Excel to calculate the correlation coefficient? Basically for two things. One, you can calculate the answer with one formula. And two, you can check your work, uh, your, your columns, and your step-by-step -step, uh, calculations in Excel. And I'm going to show you both. Note that the data set that I have is exactly the same as the video. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to type um, the formula, one formula, to calculate the correlation coefficient. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to click on an empty cell. I'm going to double click on an empty cell. And I'm going to type small r for correlation coefficient. Maybe I want to put it in the center just to make it look nice. Okay. Now I'll double click on the new empty cell right next to it. Click on the one, two, three button. Click on equals to start my formula. Okay. Then change the keyboard. Uh, what do I type for correlation coefficient? Now let's see. C O R. There it is. Core EL. I'm going to click on that. And now you see it says right here on the top, it says I need two arrays. Basically, what's X and what's Y. Okay, so I'm going to click on the A2 field and I'm going to drag so that I can get the data set. And you can see it says A2 colon A8. That's my first array. And then my second array, I'm going to click on B2. And I'm going to drag until I get all the data. There you go. Note that I'm using an iPad. Great thing about using uh, Excel on an iPad is that Excel is for free. And it's a great tool if students need access to these formulas uh, built into Excel. So I have everything that it needs. I'm going to press return and there it is. It gives me 0.811 and that's the same answer that I got in the video. So that's how you do correlation coefficient in Excel. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to do it step by step. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to calculate x times y, the first column, right? x times y. And so let's go to C2, which is our empty uh, cell. I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to press equals. And I'm going to choose the numbers that I want to multiply. The first two numbers are A2 times, right, which is the star, times B2, which is this. So you'll note that you're not multiplying the numbers per se, but you're multiplying the cells. And that's important, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to press Enter, and we know that 2 times 4 gives me 8, just like the video. So I'm going to remove this keyboard here. I'm going to click on A8 once and you'll see that it says fill. So I'm going to click on fill and then you have the arrows. So I'm going to click and hold on the down arrow and I'm going to go all the way down so that I go to the last row of the data. And there it is. You'll see that it multiplied every pair all the way down to 15. Great. Now, let's do x squared. x caret 2 represents x squared. All right, so I'm going to double click on d2. And I'm going to press equals. Remember, equals begins the process of using a formula. So x squared. So 
the easiest way for x squared is to get a2 and multiply it by itself again. And you see a2 times a2. Very straightforward. Enter. And we know that 2 squared is 4. I'm going to remove the keyboard. I'm going to click on once, it seems like. On the cell, click on fill. And I'm going to fill down all the way to the last row. Ah, seems like that didn't work. No problem. Click on it once, click on fill, drag down, and it gives me nine. Okay, and you'll note that three times three does give me nine. Uh, five times five gives me 25 and so forth. Okay, let's go to y squared. I'm gonna double click on that so that I can get the keyboard, press equals. Very important that you're clicking on the right cell to do these calculations. Like y squared here, right? If we accidentally picked x, then the whole thing would be wrong. So let's make sure that y squared is the bushels, right? Which is b2 times, let's say b2 again, right? Multiply that number uh, twice, enter, gives me 16. I'm gonna get rid of this keyboard click on this until I get this menu click on fill and then click on the down arrow click and hold on the down arrow and then it fills those numbers up for you and you'll note that again 5 times 5 does give me 25 on the bottom 5 times 5 is 25 and so forth okay so everything looks exactly the same as the video and you can see that we are doing pretty well so far the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, get the sums so I'm going to click and hold and drag um, this row and see if I can get the sums now on the top right here, there's a home button, insert, there's a formula button, and it looks like there's an auto sum right here on the left. Let's click on auto sum. And it's going to say, what type of sum do you want? You want an average, a count, a min, a max? Let's do sum. And there they are. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to double check to see if my sums are correct. The sum of x is 20, that's good. The sum of y is 30, good. Uh, sum of x, y is 93, very good. Sum of x squared is 68. Sum of y squared is 136. So when you do it by hand, you can double check your work through Excel. Okay, so just to make it look nice, I'm going to click on Home. I'm going to click on Center so all the numbers are nice and centered. And if this column is not, let's say, I can make it centered make it look good okay <clears throat> what's next so we got to put it into a formula don't we okay to help me on this what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these cool thing about the tablet is it kind of knows what it what you think you might need to do so it to told me hey after I highlighted this it told me hey do you want to copy this and yes I do I'm going to put it down here, paste, and you'll see why I do that. Okay, so I'm going to go in an empty spot over here and start my calculations. So I'm going to do um, piecewise the calculations. I'm going to double click here so I can get my keyboard. Note that the uh, Excel sheet is being pushed over, which is fine. I mean, you could technically pinch this and make it small, but that might be too small for you. So I'm making it a little bit bigger so that everybody can see. Okay. All right. So 
how's this go? Well, r is equal to, and then you got the numerator, right? n times the sum of x, y. Uh, n is what? 7, right? So just like in the video. So we're going to press an equal sign, right, to the cell. 7 times what? 7 times the sum of x, y. So the sum of x, y is this column, right? So let's click on the number 93. Okay, enter. That's going to give you 651, which is exactly like the video. And I'm going to go to the next column over here. And I'm going to press an equal sign. And it's x sum of x times sum of y. Sum of x times sum of y, right? And I'm going to press enter, which gives me 600, just like the video. And I'm going to continue on over here on the right. And I'm going to say uh, equal sign to start the formula. 651, which is the 12. Take away, which is here. My E12, which is the next number over. Enter. 51, just like the video. Great. So... Now I gotta calculate the bottom part, which is a little bit harder, but not too hard. Let's do that. Well, we'll start, I don't know, over here somewhere. Okay, so there's a lot of pieces here. I'm not gonna do a whole, you know, a square root, parentheses, parentheses, and all that. That that takes too long. All I know is I'm gonna do this piece by piece. So I'm gonna put an equal sign. I need seven times. Uh, the sum of x squared, which is, let me move over here a little bit, this number right here. Okay, good. Uh, 476, which is perfect. And then I'm going to need the sum of x, sum of x quantity squared, not sum of x squared, but sum of x and then square it. Okay, so we press the equal sign. Sum of x quantity squared. How do I do that? Okay, so I would think we take the sum of x, which is 20, and then multiply it by the sum of x again. There you go. Piece of cake, which is 400. Okay. And what I would do here is, um, this, this line would be perfect. Press an equal sign. I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to subtract... 400, enter, then I get 76. And 76 is the answer I get in the video. Now, and you know, you have to keep in mind where all these numbers are. You probably can do something a little bit better than this. But for now, I think we're comfortable enough on where all these numbers go. Okay. Uh, the next step is going to be what? It's going to be n times sum of y squared. So n again, so we press an equal sign, n is 7 times what? Sum of y squared, right? Where is that? 136, right? And again, that copying that, that row helps me out. 952, perfect, just like the video. Then the next square here is going to be what? Sum of y quantity squared. So Equal sign. Sum of y is which one? This guy. And I'm going to multiply it again so I can square it. Uh-oh, something happened. What happened here? Ah, you see, you notice something? I multiplied bushels instead of the number. And that's cool. I mean, the machine told you what's going on. So let's press equals 30 times 30. Okay, enter. 900. Okay, we're good. Now I'm going to subtract... I'm going to press equals this number, right, which is 952, subtract 900, enter, 52. Great. So what do we do? Well, we're going to have to multiply, right, 76 times 54, which will give you 3952. i got to take the square root of this. So how do I take that? Equals, how do I do square roots? Well, there's a function, sq, ah, sqrt. Square root what? What number? Well, f 
13, which I want to square root that number, enter, which gives you 62.864, just like in the video. And finally, what is the answer, right? So I'm going to say small r. What is that going to equal to? Well, it's going to be 51 divided by this number, enter. And there it is, 0.811. I'm going to make that a little bit straight. And there it is. Same answer. Again, you know, this area right here might look messy. And you have to practice visualizing where those numbers are. Perhaps you want to maybe type something next to the number to remember what they are. And, and a lot of times you don't. Now, you might say, well, you know, why not just create one large formula? You could. And I have this in my other sheet here. I did that. And there is the formula right there. That looks really crazy. Look at all the parentheses and double, triple parentheses. It's just a waste of time trying to calculate it that way. Too many steps. Um, and But if you get it right, you know, boom, you get the answer. But I think it's easier to do it in chunks, just like the same way you do it in the real world. Again, you use Excel to double check your work, okay? And this way we know we're doing it right.